Today on the newscast, China is in the midst of a massive nuclear weapons buildup as America shows weakness on the world stage. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is here next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast. The communist regime in Beijing has been very busy as of late. Number one, of course, enforcing a harsh crackdown on protesters who've taken to the streets over the past week in cities like Beijing and Shanghai to demonstrate against absolutely draconian COVID lockdowns and regulations enforced by the communist regime in Beijing. That's number one. Number two, of course, China continues to prepare for an eventual invasion of Taiwan. But that's not all. The U.S. Pentagon just released a new report this week saying that China is also in the midst of a massive nuclear weapons buildup. Now, right now, China has an estimated 400 nuclear warheads. According to this new Pentagon report, by the year 2035, China will have at least 1,500 nuclear warheads. Bring it even closer, 2030, they will have 1,000 nuclear warheads. Again, 400 now, uh, 1,000 by just 2030, not too far away, folks, less than a decade. What you have is a massive nuclear buildup by the communist regime in Beijing, at the same time, of course, expanding their military and, in particular, their navy. Now, the U.S. still has some 3,700 nuclear warheads. Russia has close to 6,000 nuclear warheads, but nevertheless, China is playing with the big boys increasingly for sure, and this is a very troubling signal. And it comes as the U.S. is showing serious weakness on the world stage on a variety of fronts under the Biden administration. Afghanistan, the debacle there in August 2021, was just the tip of the iceberg. We've got what I call the Gathering Storm Coalition, China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea, chief among them aligned against the West and on the march and feeling emboldened right now. I recently hosted a special on TBN called Restoring America, and I sat down with former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who also served as CIA director under former President Trump, and he made the point that, look, we can't restore America unless America once again assumes its position as the leader of the free world. He's got a brand new book coming out called Never Give an Inch. Here's my interview with former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, it is great to have you with us. It is great to be back with you. Bless you. You too. Hey, we've talked here on TBN about a gathering storm that's forming against America and really the free world. You think of Russia, China, Iran, North Korea kind of coming closer together. In the wake of Afghanistan, America's standing seems to be lessened, obviously. What do you see? You obviously were at the forefront of this during your time as CIA director, Secretary of State. Do you see this as a gathering storm and perhaps the most dangerous time we've seen since World War II? I, I think so. It's been uh, quite something to watch these last 20 months since President Trump and I left office. Uh, a change in the perception of America's place in the world. Uh, part of that's domestic things, right? When you don't get it right in your schools, when you teach them that kids are, uh, that our, our nation was founded on these racist ideas, when you teach them the wrong things in schools, our adversaries see that. When you, uh, when you abandon Americans in Afghanistan, you get 13 Americans killed on the way you depart. The, the world sees this, and so your point is quite right, whether it's what, what, what Putin did after we left in Europe, what uh, the Chairman Kim's firing missiles at a rate that we haven't seen in an awfully long time. Right. The bad guys can see when America is weak, and when we leave this stage, um, it, it matters in Kyiv or Beijing or Moscow, but man, it matters a lot here at home, and we are all worse off because America is not doing its traditional role of being that moral force in the world. Yeah, the, the shining city on a hill, as Ronald yes, Reagan sir. once said, Secretary. We had Afghanistan, obviously, debacle. Vladimir Putin moved into Ukraine. You served in the cabinet for President Trump throughout his administration, again, first in the, as CIA director, then as Secretary of State. Do you think these events may have unfolded differently uh, under a second Trump term? <laughs> I do. Yeah. Uh, one can't prove the counterfactual, right? We aren't there today. But the best example I have is 
You know, Vladimir Putin took a fifth of Ukraine in 2014 under President Obama. And then for four years, he didn't take any more of Europe or Ukraine. And then a few months later, after we depart, he does it again. Um, I think that's pretty good evidence that his perception of risk, his perception of America, and our preparedness to do the right things, uh, not to send our boys and girls, not to send the 82nd Airborne Division or Marine Unit, but to use American power and America's force for good and to never apologize for our country. Yeah. I think he could see that uh, the risk was too high, and so he didn't. And I suspect that would have continued if we were still there. Well, speaking of which, your new book is called Never Give an Inch, uh, coming soon. And look, peace through strength seems to be the message not only of the book, but of your career uh, in the <laughs> diplomatic realm, but in the military. Yeah. Um, you have firsthand experience with the likes of these gathering storm leaders, the likes of Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping. Uh, let's start with Russia. Vladimir Putin obviously making a lot of noise about using nuclear weapons. Is he serious? Is this a legitimate threat? It is. It's real. We should take it seriously. Uh, and I write about this in, in the book. Uh, uh, we have to take the threats and the things these bad guys say seriously. What you can't do is you can't go to a fundraiser and talk about Armageddon. That emboldens the bad guys. It frightens America. It tells our friends we're not likely to stay with you. Yeah. What you have to do is demonstrate real seriousness, real resolve, a desire, a deep desire for peace. But to your point about President Reagan, American strength, economic strength, diplomatic strength, and of course military power coming together to deter our adversaries. Uh, it's the kind of work that we did. If you're asking about how you restore America, that's what this book is about. The title is Never Give an Inch. The subtitle is Fighting for an America that I Love. And it's that America, that shining city on the hill, where every family and every church gets a chance to live its life and practice its faith in the way that it desires, uh, that's where America needs to return to. And I'm convinced the American people are gonna do that. You lay out in the book, Secretary, how uh, you made it one of the pillars of your strategy to spread religious freedom, to encourage it around the world. You stood up for persecuted Christians. Tell us why that's so near and dear to your heart and why that could pay, play a real central role in restoring America. So it's important as a Secretary of State and frankly as CI Director, it was important to me personally as an evangelical Christian uh, to be honest about who I was and how my worldview was shaped, right? The, the Bible, if you believe in the Bible, if you believe those words are the truth, uh, I think it shapes the way you believe about the world and how you view every human interaction that you have. Uh, but second, it matters for American security as well. Uh, nations that have more religious freedom are less likely to go to war or to cause problems for the United States. And so we did make religious freedom a central pillar of what we did. Uh, one of the one of my uh, most joyous moments was when I was able to go to North Korea and I had three Christian pastors who were being held hostage there, uh, climb aboard a plane. I tell this story in vivid detail in the book. Uh, I was literally standing at the top of the stairs at the, on, on, the, on your airplane, on the American taxpayer airplane watching these three men climb out of these white panel vans and come to freedom. It brought tears to my eyes. And when I landed, uh, one of the pastors put a Bible verse on a little card for me. Uh, truly remarkable moment, reminding us all that keeping one's faith and commitment can deliver really remarkable outcomes. Even when you don't see the way, yeah. the Lord can help you get there. Amen. You know, we have obviously the Judeo-Christian Judeo moorings and foundations of this country. There's a relatively new ideology, Secretary, you've spoken about a lot called wokeism. That's the best way to <laughs> describe it, uh, pushed by the radical left, which really seeks to unmoor America's traditional foundations. How can we fight back against that? And how dangerous is that ideology? Uh, this is a fight for the times. I get asked often, what's the biggest threat to the United States? So these problems around the world, Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping, Chairman Kim, are real serious. We need to confront them. The biggest problem is if we walk away from America's traditions. The things that built our republic, to your point, the Judeo-Christian founding of our country. Uh, our schools today are infected by leaders who want to impose an idea that somehow America's founding was indecent. It was racist. The 1619 Project, call it what you will. Uh, in our military today, I am very worried about America's military leadership. It has, too, ad adopted some of this ideas of uh, 
critical race theory and diversity, equity, and inclusion above merit, individual yeah. merit, human the, dignity as the individual. The gender They, they, they want to put madness. us in groups, yeah. the gender madness. Yeah. They want to put us in these groups instead of saying, no, we're war fighters. We, this is what we right. do. We train, we, we deliver. If you're the best at firing your M242 machine gun, then I want you. I don't care what your gender is, what your race is. That's who I want. When you walk away from those things, you put the American ideal at risk. And this is something we can never permit to happen. And it's why I know folks like you and I are gonna stay in this fight for an awfully long time. Thanks again to Secretary Pompeo for joining us. Again, folks, the new book, it comes out in February, 2023. It is called Never Give an Inch. You can pre-order it at mikepompeo.com. Also, if you want to see that entire Restoring America special featuring former Secretary Pompeo, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, Franklin Graham, and more. You can check it out right here on our channel, actually, under U.S. News, that category here on our homepage. Scroll around a little bit and you will find it there, a full one-hour program, Restoring America with some very important voices for such a time as this. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here today on the Watchman Newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.